back. It is the Vegas State Sharp and Spiro. Glad you could join us on a Wednesday. By the way, coming up in hour number three, uh, Sandy Van for the Sandy Van Law Firm coming up. Boy, there's a, there's a crazy story in Vegas, a DUI driver that killed several people. And uh, there are some interesting legal consequences in this case. We'll get to that coming up in hour number three. Hey, we'll Johnny, also... good work with the intro music, by the way. Oh. Johnny, our producer. See, nobody knows who you're talking about. Johnny is our producer. You have to, you have to give him a proper intro. Our producer, Johnny. Uh, the NFL and uh, Jay Z. We'll get to that coming up here in just a few minutes. Johnny does always does well with the music. I always love the intro. Yeah, but this was this. especially good. John and I were we're, we're, we're kind of we're kind of <laughs> jamming over here. Yeah, we got the head bob. Yeah. <laughs> so John Schaefer is in studio. He is the news anchor here at KDWN. John, what is going on in the world, my friend? Well, it's back to the bargaining table today for Clark County School District and the Teachers Union. Negotiators for both sides will sit down and try again to hammer out a new two-year contract. The union wants the district to honor the 3% raises promised by the state legislature. They also want an additional 2% that accrues with a teacher's time in the district and an increase in the district contribution to health care. The union says the threat of a teacher strike remains on the table. The district says the legislature did not provide enough money, leaving a hole in the district's budget that requires some per pupil funding cuts. Don't they have like 600 or so vacancies in the class? 780 is that what it is? teaching vacancies. That is absurd. So what are they doing there? Are these substitute teachers that are just filling the jobs until they find full timers? Some substitutes. Uh, some teachers have to f- cover other classes when they're supposed to be having their <laughs> planning breaks. And then they just combine classes together. People are just going to giant classes. And then we wonder why the Clark County right. School District is not one of the top school districts in the country. Jeez, what a know, shocker. Where'd all the pot money go that I voted for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point. Federal appeals court has ruled against Nevada in a legal battle over the U.S. government's secret shipment of weapons-grade plutonium to a site near Las Vegas. A three-judge panel of the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals denied the state's appeal after a judge refused to block any future shipments to Nevada. The court in San Francisco says the matter is moot because the Energy Department already sent the radioactive material and has promised that no more will be hauled here. Nevada's Attorney General says he will continue to pursue all legal options to block future shipments of weapons-grade plutonium. I I got nothing on that one. Please continue. You got nothing. <laughs> got plutonium just north of here. Yeah, it sounds like I don't know how to respond there's to that. Quite, there's quite yeah. a bit of plutonium north of here. And I'm, I'm not sure how good of a thing that is yeah, right now. I mean, so, my, my car is radioactive. That's about all I know. Right, well, because you have a nuclear power plant to get cheap energy doesn't mean where you're dumping ground. You well, figure out what to do with your own nuclear let's just waste. Call, let's just call Steve. Wasn't there a movie with Steven Seagal? He lives in Las Vegas. I mean, let's call him to try to figure this thing out. He'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Las Vegas and Convention Visitors Authority Board of Directors authorized $3 million in upfront funding to stage the Pac-12 Conference Football Championship at Allegiant Stadium in 2020 and 2021. It's the first funded event at the new stadium, which is still a year away from opening. Other events are lining up to use the facility, including the Las Vegas Bowl. Attendance has declined in recent years for the Pac-12 Conference Championship, and they are hopeful that bringing the game to Vegas will increase their attendance. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with them on that, that one. Is People a, like coming that here. is a great decision by both parties, and yes, as long that as, will 100% increase the attendance. As long as it's not BYU that makes any of those games, because if they do then uh, you're not going to be able to bet on the game. You know, they, they just, they, I'm telling you, West Coast Conference, you go to the Orleans, you can't even bet on a, on, a, on a game there because the BYU fans, some of them are Mormons, and they want to hold us responsible. I guess I guess they think Who we're Mormons too. I don't betting know. on BYU? That's true. Not me. No, not yeah, the basketball. Absolutely not me. They no just way. fired their basketball coach. Football team's not great either. Right, and that's the yeah. problem. They yeah. travel well, but you're right. They don't spend any money in Las Vegas because no. of the things we all have here, they don't do. Last I checked, <laughs> Mormons aren't allowed to go to strip clubs. Right. right? They don't drink um, coffee. They don't drink alcohol. They don't gamble. They don't gamble. No gambling, yeah. but other than that, it sounds like a really fun life. Just ahead, happy John. the Big Ten <laughs> is now part of the Las Vegas Bowl. Yes. That'll be exciting. I, I, yes. I would imagine that the restaurants do well, though. I, I don't know. Let's ask some Mormons about it. I mean, I'm assuming they eat. Buffet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of restaurants, America's favorite restaurant chain just added to its menu for the first time in three years. Chick-fil-A now offering macaroni and cheese as a side option nationwide. <laughs> it's the only addition since 2016. <laughs> Mac and cheese are the quintessential comfort food and something we are so excited to offer our guests at Chick-fil-A, said Amanda Norris, executive director of menu and packaging. The chain says it's using a classic recipe made with a blend of cheeses, including cheddar, Parmesan, and Romano, and baked fresh daily. Chick-fil-A is one of the most profitable restaurant chains in the country, according to Nation's Restaurant News. It generated $10.6 billion in annual sales wow. behind only McDonald's and Starbucks. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I've never been to Chick-fil-A You're before. Missing. Maybe the only time I'm hungry is on Sunday, but I ne- I seriously, I've never been. The best. Is it really that good? Unbelievable. Really? The I don't fast like food? it. I can't believe the way people clamor to it or used to drive to Utah to get it. It's oh. a chicken sandwich with a pickle on it. 
That's all it is. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Chick-fil-A, but I, but this macaroni and cheese thing for me is, is, a, is a pretty big hard pass. I had the worst. It just makes no sense. I was in. San- I had no interest in driving through and picking up macaroni and cheese under any circumstances. I ever. was in San Diego over the weekend, this past weekend, and I got a something that is called a lobster macaroni and cheese oh, bread bowl. Oh, yeah. And oh. I, but I was kind of disappointed by it. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, and it was 20 bucks for soup. Depends on where you go. Yeah, so Chick-fil-A, yeah. So, so I'm hearing yeses and nos here in studio. I'm definitely in the minority when it comes to Chick-fil-A. What about the chicken without the bread? Don't. So I have a, my biggest issue with Chick-fil-A is we won't do business in Nevada because all of you people that live there are sinners. So we can't be near you. Oh, wait a minute. You guys have a lot of money. You know what? We can open restaurants you know, there. And people line up for it like crazy. I'm sure they're so, making a so, killing. But So you think their, their morality and their, and their values are, are basically fraudulent? No, I think the guy that founded the company believed what he believed. But once he died, the rest of his family's like, we're cashing in on that 50th <laughs> state we need to get into. But they're not open Fair on enough. Sunday. And yeah, no, they're not and open they on Sunday. And that's fine. I think businesses can do whatever they want. I, I they don't think, want to work I do here, think they, they, have, they have the best chicken sandwich. So you know it's hard to deny that they don't have the I just best want to walk sandwich. in there and wear, I'm not an atheist, but just walk in there and say, I'm an atheist, and then wear a hat that says, I hate religion, uh, and see if they allow me to order food. You think that Absolutely. would be a problem? Absolutely. Well, you know, they would allow you to order food. Would that, would that, that wouldn't be a problem? Okay. You know, you, know do you don't own the chain. If you become a franchise franchise owner, yeah. when you go to sell, they they buy it back. I try. I I looked at bringing. I looked into a Chick Fil A franchise in Vegas fifteen years ago. No, no chance. I did not know that. And the Chick Fil A in Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta is not open for football games for Falcons games because they're played on Sunday. Absolutely correct. (laughs) That is insane. Only open for other events. That okay. I don't agree with that. I'm not. I don't agree. It's why they don't have them in most airports because it's not open on Sunday. Stupid. I I think if if religion is going to make you and turn you into an inconvenience to others, then I am not for that. You do what you want in your life, but don't inconvenience other people. But imagine an airport though. I'm not open on Sunday. That's that to me doesn't make any sense. Why are you there? Uh, It's just it's just dumb. I'm just going to call it what it is. All right, Mr. Schaefer, uh, get back to work. All right, thanks. It's nice to tell the program director that I've never said that before. Get back to work. I don't think I've ever told anybody that, by, by the way. But you got to go well, off to get a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and it really is great. Yeah. All right. Thanks, John. Good job with the news. And uh, obviously, I want to get back to a little bit of what we were talking about earlier. And I, what I mean by that is not Chick-fil-A. That's enough on Chick-fil-A. But uh, we had a caller who just called in. And um, his name was Sean, I believe. And we were talking about gun violence. And by the way, if you want to be a part of this conversation, you can give us a buzz at 257-5396. We'll get to your calls in just a minute here. So Sean brought up Barack Obama in regard to this gun violence and talking about the President Trump's rhetoric and maybe a, a role that he could be playing in some of these mass shootings. And Sean said, Obama did some of the same stuff. That is completely and utterly ludicrous. Now, I don't think Barack Obama incited violence. I don't think he did a good job with race relations. Uh, he never told anybody to go back to their country. He never called illegals rapists. You don't think that calling, saying Trayvon Martin could have been my son ins- d- incited violence against no. police officers Ab- to some degree? Ab- first of all, it wasn't His a- disrespect for no. police was brutal. I mean, it was pretty well, bad, Brian. Well, you just brought up Trayvon Martin. First of all, it wasn't a police officer that killed Trayvon Martin. It was somebody that wanted to be a police officer, a buffoon, exactly. and George Zimmerman. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, George Zimmerman was not white. The media wanted to portray him as being white. He was not white. He's just an idiot with a gun who thought he was a police officer. Uh, a wannabe. In, in, well, he could I become thought, a cop. I, th- I thought he was actually partially Latin. Zimmerman. He's not yeah. white. He's not, not white. white. Okay. But that's beside the point. Listen, I don't think, look, Obama, I, I'm not going to defend Obama when it came to being a president. I thought he was an average president at best. I don't think he did a great job. But what wow. I always say about Obama, you on that one. well, what I always, what I always <laughs> say about Obama I love it. is that I like he's, that. he was a good husband. He still is. He's a good father. He's a decent man, like what John McCain said. You can disagree with some of his policies, but I don't think Barack Obama attacked people on a regular basis anywhere close I to th- what Donald Trump did. And no, I don't think Barack Obama incited violence. The I, answer is no. I, I don't opinion. think that Black Lives Matters or Trayvon Martin helped anything to do Barack with Obama I, I did not. That, I think Barack you, you Obama can say that. Obama it, did not it, create it did Black Lives Matter. Violence. I'm not suggesting that he did create Black Lives Matter. Now, what happened with Trump is he is so blunt and he is so straightforward that people who are who already have radical mindsets on the right or the left are triggered by it. Yep. There's nothing blunt and, and straight. That's, and that's what's going on here. Perhaps. Is but- that you, you have those. You have those. I would say that with Trump's pre- in Trump's presidency, you have a lot of white supremacists. And there are. That's an issue across the country. Tucker Carlson is incorrect. That is an issue. But you have a lot of white supremacists who during Obama's presidency and GW George W Bush's presidency were 
they, they were kind of dormant. And Trump's how, – how, how blunt he is and the way that he talks about things, you, you could call it rhetoric or whatever you want. It is enabling it, – it is, it is putting these white supremacists into the light, if you will. He speaks what people think, and, they, and unfortunately some fools act upon certain things they hear, but they've been wanting to do it for years. Do you think – they, and, they, and they were adverse towards Obama. Think about – the, gun, the, the Bundy issue. You know, part of the reason they shut that down was because yeah. the militia from Michigan was on its way here. Mm-hmm. So they were afraid there was going to be mass blood and it would be law enforcement. I have to sit here and say Obama did not help law enforcement relations, sp- specifically in his own backyard in Illinois. Perhaps, Worst. perhaps Worst. that is true. Point taken. But I think uh, Donald Trump has taken it to the next level in dividing the country based on uh, immigrants, based on race. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. We'll take a few phone calls on this at 257-5396. But if I call you, if I call the, you the names and call, and say the things about you that aren't true, I mean, his skin could be thicker, I agree. But his his reactionary tone has worked. And I have to tell you something. The reason he's tweeting, when I say reactionary tone in general, I'm talking about not not the shooting type of thing, and sometimes he needs to think a little bit more before he speaks. The Charlotte mistake what he was trying to say is there were good people on both sides. He wasn't trying to defend the, the action in but Charlotte. But, Pat, he goes on Twitter yesterday and starts attacking Chris Cuomo and says his lang- talking I mean, about his how language How many times stuff. has Chris Cuomo oh attacked him? Oh, my God, I, 100%. And Chris Cuomo, Cuomo is Cuomo, a CNN anchor. Cuomo, he's, not, he's not even a politician. It doesn't matter. What Cuomo does on a regular basis is spew lies and hate. I disagree. Well, I, I again, disagree. Well, that's, we, we, well, we agree no, to disagree. You, you, you can say spew lies or hate, or you can say that he actively goes out of his way to disparage the president of the United States. Every day. Which you can't disagree with. All right, well, let's try to take some phone calls on this one at 257-5396. Let's go to Dave. Dave's been waiting patiently on hold. What's going on? What's up, Dave? Yeah. I. Uh, by the way, KDWN is our favorite station. We, we shut the TV off eight years ago. I appreciate that. Radio. I appreciate that. Station. It's, it's the best. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate but that. Thanks a lot, Dave. But when we get into the uh, talk about, you know, this red flag uh, gun control stuff, uh, I'm quite familiar due to my uh, profession you know, as far as FBI background checks go. And I'll tell you, they're quite intense. I mean, they look for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, they look for protective orders, uh, you know, warrants, uh, anybody that's committed a crime, uh, as they felonies. Should. And, you know, I know a guy who's a uh, captain in the Air Force. He went to buy a handgun, and they rejected him. So Why? They, well, uh, something to do with about something that happened in a divorce a while back, and he didn't go into it, but... They do look at us pretty close, and I just I just don't see how we can do any more than what they're doing. I, I think the problem is, in my opinion, this gun violence problem is the people that do it, I think a lot of them are on uh, antidepressants, and they play these daggone video games where... And these games are so realistic. They run around with shotguns. And they so you think we should address video games before, before comprehensive background checks? Is that what you're saying? Well, no. I think parents need to be somewhat educated. As I don't what, disagree. What uh, Dave, I don't disagree. There's a lot of factors here. But you just said you don't think we should do any more when it comes to background checks? Well, I don't see how we can do more intense background checks than what we do. They look at everything. Well, then the president is wrong, too, because the president is for uh, looking into more comprehensive background checks. You disagree with him? That's what he said. Well, I don't really see what else we can do other than monitor uh, kids closer than we do because most of these people— Why can't we do both? Why can't we do both? Well, we probably can, but I'm just saying the background checks are pretty well maxed out. I mean, anything you've done— the FBI, they got a whole picture of your life and your criminal then history. Then how, look- how is it in Parkland that the police are called to his home 86 times and he's allowed to get a gun? How is it that the uh, Dayton shooter is allowed 250 rounds of ammunition? This guy had a rape list. He had a death list. How does that happen? Well, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a police officer. I'm not a psychiatrist. But what's wrong with 250 rounds of ammunition? What, what's the problem there? Uh, I'll, you don't see anything wrong with anybody buying 200. It, what, what could be your excuse for wanting 250 rounds of ammunition? Why? What's well, the reason for it? Okay, I've got my own target range out here on 80 acres. I've been long range shooting since I was 16, and I don't really hunt. I just enjoy mm-hmm. shooting targets at a. I appreciate long- that, Dave, and you sound like a like minded individual. But in a in a perfect world, I wish everybody was like you. But here's my issue: that is your hobby, and I respect that. But you know something else that I respect more: the safety 
of people in this country. I don't want to take if, your hobby away. If, if, but you, if you if you could <laughs> save ten thousand lives a year or yeah. do what you do, what exactly. would you choose? Exactly. So don't. I mean, I appreciate your call, Dave. You sound like a smart guy. But uh, and please call back any time. Yeah, and congratulations on being a successful rancher as well, obviously. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Samantha. Samantha, what's going on? Hey, Samantha. Hi, I, I miss your old time slot. You miss our old this time slot. Well, I'm glad you're listening now, Samantha. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, I just wanted to comment. You were talking about the the division that Trump has created, and that's, I think it's more the media. The media has created the division. The media is definitely not helping. Yeah, although, although, you know, what he says isn't helping, but they play on it, play on it, play on it, and it's 24-7. Yeah. He, he gives and, them the fodder, for sure. Well, let me ask you a question, right. Samantha. That's an interesting yeah. point you bring up. Let's go back, say, five or six years uh, before the uh-huh. – par- or actually, let's go back, you know, before the Parkland shooting, even a few months before. If Barack Obama made some of the remarks that Donald Trump has made, demonizing illegals, calling them rapists and bad people, and I suppose some of them are good people. If somebody is one of his rallies said, you know, shoot him in, in regards to illegals, and Obama stood there with his thumb up his ass, so to speak, for lack of a better term, and did nothing about it, don't you think Fox News would be pounding on Barack Obama's door? Don't you think Fox oh, yeah. News? Okay, so we agree Fox that it's News on both would. sides. Okay. Yeah, Fox okay. News would, but that would be the only place you'd ever hear it. And Perhaps. As far as, as far as Obama not fanning the flames, he might not have fanned the flames, but he didn't. He didn't do anything to help curb what was happening. Well, let me. Um, okay, so let me ask you this then. You know me, Samantha. JD is is more of a Trump supporter. I talk about Donald Trump's rhetoric all the time. Do you think we play a role? Do you think something we've done on the radio and listening to this show uh, is responsible for some of these shootings? No, absolutely not. Okay, so make a distinction then. Give me an example of she's something. Saying, she's saying mainstream media that's paid okay, to, that's paid, fair. To, paid to say they specific don't, they things. Don't report. Like okay. Sean, no, Sean Hannity is paid. He makes twenty five million bucks a year for yeah. a reason. I understand. Right. Chris Samantha, Cuomo makes ten million dollars a year for a reason. Samantha, give me an example. And they don't report. Yeah. But they don't report the news anymore. All it's opinion after opinion after opinion. When I when I listen to your show, I expect an opinion. Right. When but right. you can't turn on any besides yeah. the the local you know five thirty p.m. news. Right. It's really well. Really let me hard say this. People take I, it as as news. Point taken. Let me say this though, Samantha. I do respect some people. Uh, at Fox News and some people at CNN. I think if you watch after 3 p.m. or after 4 p.m., you're right. It's all opinions. Tucker Carlson, yes. Sean Hannity. Yes. These are opinions. Uh, and, and same thing on CNN. Don Lemon, Chris Cuomo. But I do think if you watch before 3 p.m., uh, I respect a lot of people on Fox News. I respect Wallace. I think he does a very good job. Uh, I respect okay. Brett Baer. I think he does a very good job. Uh, Shepard Smith, I think he does a very good job. And listen, I think there are people on CNN that do the same. I think I don't watch MSNBC very much, but certainly earlier, I think there are people that do the same. But point well taken, Samantha. I do think the media does play a role, but I do think the buck starts with the president. And I appreciate the call, Samantha, and I'm so glad that you're listening to us in the mornings. I hope you continue to do so. Call back anytime. Uh, thanks, you ever watch Samantha. Good Morning America? Absolutely. Seven o'clock. If Trump's they, they politicize Trump adversely every time. They do. I stopped watching it because of that reason. Mm-hmm. I used to love watching the opening news, the first nineteen minutes, they gave you news. Now if it's if it's Trump, it's all adverse. It's always negative. It's always fair. pushing that, to the right. But that's fair. I, I want Walter Cronkite again sure. when I watch the news. I don't want opinion. I want yeah. news. That's fair. I, I get where you're coming from, and actually, I get where Samantha's coming from too. I don't necessarily disagree with her. Let's go to Brian. Brian, what's going on? Hey guys, what's up, Brian? You know, this is a very difficult subject, mainly because there's a lot of emotional misinformation being bandied about every day from both sides. Uh, Dave two callers ago said that, you know, there already is a federal comprehensive background check in order to purchase a weapon. But you would agree there are loopholes. In the last 10 days, in the last two weeks, three mass shootings, every one of them passed a a background check. Now, the one in Gilroy even tore a hole in the fence so that he could go past the metal detector. And my point is this. You can try to legislate and do a whole lot of things that might make you feel good for the moment, but it's not really going to stop what's happening right now. So I'll say what I said to some of the other callers, Brian. Does that mean we shouldn't do anything? No, 
we should do something, but let's do something that makes sense. What makes sense? Okay. Well, you've been you've been saying things about the president that his comments Play are role. in some way responsible in some way for the shooting in El Paso. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I stand by and that. And you've quoted the manifesto as, as being a part of that. Had you read the manifesto, yes, I you have. would know that he addressed the fact that he says, I know a lot of people are going to blame this on Trump's rhetoric. Yeah, I remember I had he said these that. views long before President Trump was even on the okay, radar. Okay, so show me something before the manifesto we use when he used the term invasion in describing illegals, because nobody found it, Brian. Well, I can take you back and show you news articles where Harry Reid called it an invasion. Which is also wrong. Which is I mean, Brian, Two wrongs do not make a right. Brian, how is it I'm not, not an how, it how, how is it, this. How is it not I'm an invasion? Wait, wait, when, you, when, you're, when you're entering the country illegally, when, when, you're, when you're breaking the law, when you're possibly bringing yeah. in fentanyl, really? fentanyl and, arm, and, and weapons, you have no yeah. idea. It's not just, it's not just people why. coming through. You have no idea what's coming through as well. Brian, I got and to, to me, that is an invasion. Brian, I got to take Precisely. some other... I, I appreciate the call, Brian. Can I make one more statement? Please quickly, because I'm up against a hard break. Okay. What I would like to do, there is a House resolution right now called TAPS 838, which is targeting, strengthening our schools and other places where these mass shooters tend to go to. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would like to see is a 75-day death penalty to anybody that is clearly guilty on videotape of a mass shooting like the guy in El Paso. Amen. He's tried He's convicted, and he's put to death by yeah. the same method he used to kill the innocent Amen. People. Well, I don't, Brian, we're not going to disagree on that one. I am for the death penalty. I appreciate the call, Brian, as always. I'm up against a break. Here's what I want to do. We got Joel. We got Jeff. We have a few other uh, callers on the line. I promise you I will get to your calls on the other side of the break. We got Pat Cassell in studio. Pat, I almost called you Pat Cadell. The late Pat Cadell. You do look like him a little bit, by the way. You you, you have a little Pat Cadell in you. Okay. Look at, that. <laughs> at, at least you didn't call you Roger Goodell. No, I didn't. No. Well, well, actually, I, I want his paycheck. I'm so glad. I'm so I glad. I want his private jet. I'm so glad he brought that up because we are going to talk a little NFL when we come back to you. But we'll take your calls in there to side of the break. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take on the all new 101.5 FM 720 AM K Dawn. Welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us. By the way, a quick reminder, tomorrow on the show, this is going to be a lot of fun. Michael Avenatti is going to be squaring off against Steve Sanchez. By the way, I'm going on Steve's show tonight. If you're wondering, uh, the 6 to 8 p.m. slot that we used to have, Steve Sanchez has taken that slot, and we've expanded our show and moved 9 a.m. to noon. But uh, I'll be going on Steve's show at 7 p.m. tonight. But Michael Avenatti and Steve Sanchez tomorrow. Somebody on the left, somebody on the way right. Yeah, they're going to do uh, they're going to do battle. And uh, Avenatti has some breaking news, some huge news that he's going to be sharing with us, breaking it on the show tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. You will not want to miss it. Trust me on this one. A lot of very popular people are going to be involved in the news that he's going to be talking about. And again, that'll be coming up tomorrow on the 9 a.m. Uh, we will be right back after this and we will take more of your calls. I know some people are, are waiting on hold. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to the Vegas take.